Hey, I'm Jesse. Let's have a devotion. We're in Matthew chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. Then Herod secretly summoned the wise men and asked them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. When you find him, report back to me so that I too can go and worship him. They had come because they spotted the star. We don't know if this star was a miraculous light in the sky placed by God or as you know, some theorize was an alignment of planets from our perspective on earth and stars from our perspective on earth that would have led to the brightest star we'd ever seen uh, in human history up until that point. This, is, this gets all the more interesting when you consider using the movement of the stars in the sky as replicated by software. Uh, you can also then fast forward and rewind the clock to see what the sky looked like at other times. The same guy who put together uh, the Bethlehem Star video also found another point at which, I want to say it was April 3rd in AD 33, where there was a complete solar eclipse over Jerusalem, which would have been about the time of the crucifixion of Jesus. Could be. Very plausible. It's really remarkable. He doesn't make, make any kind of claims to have found some sort of divine truth. He's just using a computer program and making observations with it. Um, but this same exact timing of the star was pertinent to Herod. Right? Herod secretly summoned the wise men. So he's publicly spread the word that someone's been born king of the Jews. He publicly assembles the chief priests and the scribes and the people and asks where the Christ would be born. But he secretly does this with the wise men. And he asked them the exact time that the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, and go search carefully for the child when you find him, report back to me so that I too can go and worship him. He's a phony. He claims to want to worship God, but there's murder in his heart. There's insecurity in his heart. It's almost time for Christmas. We're counting down the days. As you watch this, man, we're in the final, we're in the final five days, right? You're watching this likely on, on uh, the 21st, all right? And so you've got really, yeah, when is that? Just four more full days, and then the fifth day is Christmas. You're going to see more people come to church. And, uh, you know, as Christians, we should be happy these people come and join us. Not everybody's going to be fully authentic. Some are just coming because maybe there's a legalistic streak in their hearts. They feel like, I got to go to church. I got to go check that box. I want God to be happy with me. And I haven't been to church since before COVID. So maybe it's just time to go again. And there are other people who are going to go for another legalistic reason. But it's, it's like, oh, I want other people to approve that I'm there. But there are also going to be people who are coming because the Holy Spirit of God is at work in their hearts and they're being drawn together. See to it that we don't go to church for the wrong reasons. And the starkest example imaginable of Herod, who is pretending to want to worship God, let us examine our own hearts. Why are you coming at 5 p.m. on Christmas Eve to the AMC Theater in Factoria? Is it because you genuinely want to worship the Lord? I hope that it is. Be happy when you see numerous people all gathered together. We know that there are sometimes Herods. But as we've seen in studying the parables, God is the one who knows what happens in their hearts. God is the one who sorts out the phonies from the real ones. What matters more importantly, and the only thing that you can control, is your own heart before the Lord. So, in the peak busyness of the Christmas season, the last minute Christmas shopping and all that comes with it, would you take a moment to check your heart before the Lord? Are you doing what you're doing for the right reasons? May we have total integrity where it matters most, and that's before God.